Hi and welcome to this edition of Midi Guitar 2 Meets and Falls in Love with uh, Acoustic Samples V Horns. Any interests in playing a virtual saxophone recording, playing live with, this is the video for you. I'll be putting the acoustic samples V horns against the old leaders on the market, the audio modeling SWAM instruments. <laughs> the audio modeling instruments are physically modeled instruments all together, while the acoustic samples are sample-based instruments that have some physical modeling as well. So there are differences to take into consideration, but I'm only using those parameters that are relevant for me. Playability, agility, sound of course, and realism, and how will I be able to use these in a recording context or in a live performance context. As usual, I'll be using uh, one guitar and this is the tech control bbc2 breath and bite controller uh, this is going to be a video on midi guitar 2 the software solution for using your own guitar together with your new favorite vsti's or virtual instruments if you don't know what that's all about check out these videos all about how to set that up and get started. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the interface and the prefs and the, all the settings and stuff like that, there's a discussion going on in the VI control forum on the SWAM saxes versus the V horns specifically. And there are some great examples there for the argument that the V horns are better instruments for a piano controller together with a breath controller setup. With that said, I am using a breath controller with a MIDI guitar controller setup. And that's another thing altogether. So let's get into the details of the interface here of the V horns. Uh, to begin with, we have, we have two alto saxes, we have two tenors, two sopranos and two baritones. These saxes are made specifically for UVI's Falcon or the UVI workstation. I get the feeling that most people think that one is more towards jazz and the other one is more towards classical. I don't know about that. One is considerably darker in its tone and I prefer that for some of the performances over the brighter one but I wouldn't say that anyone is more jazz or classical. I'm starting here with the V horns tenor sax and you have a tenor sax one and you have a tenor sax two. So this is the tenor sax one and I've chosen a Dexter preset here so that would be Dexter Gordon I guess and keep in mind that I'm trying to record this as naked as possible so to me it doesn't sound really that good it sounds really naked and it sort of exposes everything that can be done but I'm also somewhat uh, self-conscious about these recordings since they could sound better if you put them in some sort of context if i play against a backing track or something like this but you'll get them clean so that you can hear exactly what it sounds like without any sort of extras <laughs> So 
So the first thing that sticks out in my mind when I use a MIDI guitar as a controller instead of a keyboard is of course uh, vibrato and it's my main argument for using a MIDI guitar. This is the Dexter Gordon setup as it comes out of the box. Uh, so you have three controllers here on the first page of the interface. You have vibrato here, you have air here in the middle and you have reverb here. And when it comes to vibrato, I have chosen manual for almost all my cases. Acoustic samples said that uh, their vibratos are not just uh, straight scripted vibratos. However I use them, they sound scripted to me. Even if they have sort of incorporated other details than just differences in pitch, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to compare vibrato styles here. So the first one is auto time and this is the way the Dexter preset comes right out of the box. Here we have a auto time, it's a timed vibrato. So if I go into the preferences here, I have vibrato up here and I have this curve that represents the kind of vibrato I'm getting with this auto vibrato. So I have the duration, it's set to three seconds and it's smooth and uh, I guess I can reshape the so sort of curve on the fly. Now you don't hear any sort of vibrato anymore. So if I sort of reshape it and exaggerate it. That's how you shape the auto time uh, feature. Pure auto is when you set the vibrato to react to some sort of controller, you have uh, perhaps an expression pedal or something. Associate that with my breath controller on CC2. So I just click somewhere here, set this to CC2, and you see that it reacts to me breathing into this. So I will have vibrato only when I breathe into this, and the amount of vibrato will depend on how hard I breathe into this, of course. <laughs> And this is a feature that actually works if you have a keyboard or something like that. The problem for me is that I can't get any sort of dynamic vibratos with this. I can't get this feeling of, okay, I want to have a slow vibrato to begin with and go into a fast vibrato and perhaps end on a some sort of pitch bend or some scoop or something. So I don't like this mechanical scripted vibratos for that reason, but these sound pretty good for being scripted vibratos. So you have this auto that's that you could connect to any sort of controller. But I would anyway set this to manual and don't have any sort of control over it whatsoever because I want to use the vibrato that comes from me using uh, bends and pitches from my MIDI Guitar 2 software. I must mention to begin with that if you're going to use this with MIDI Guitar and use the bends the way I'm doing now, go into the preferences pane here and don't forget to, to use the same pitch bend uh, in both software. So if I have pitch bend range 2 enabled on my MIDI Guitar 2 software, which I always do, uh, I want to have two semitones here as well, otherwise you won't get a pleasant result. The air here is set to velocity now, so it's going to respond to how hard I strike the notes and it, that's going to be dependent on what settings I'm using in the MIDI guitar software, of course. I'm going to get different kinds of responses as would be the actual case with a saxophone player breathing a less hard into the sax, of course. <laughs> and it actually works pretty well for that purpose. So I could even do without something like a breath controller if I wanted to. I could do a, 
a decent performance really here. And I can control actually where I am on this sort of meter. So it's it's not a problem actually. I could use this or a, a keyboard or whatever to control that value. But what I want from a saxophone or for any reed instrument I want this these swells and stuff I normally associate with these kinds of instruments. <laughs> It's a whole world of difference when using a breath controller and this is my main argument for this. Uh, if I'm just going to practice, use these instruments as some sort of practice, I don't necessarily use the breath controller all the time. But for any kind of performance where I actually want to make a difference or an impact or some emotional response, I always use the breath controller for that. The third knob is uh, the reverb. Uh, presets are set to different things depending on what they want to so, sort of focus on. So going to another preset perhaps, we can go to something like Sonny Rollins perhaps, or Sonny, it doesn't say Sonny Rollins, but I'm assuming. <laughs> I think these sound darn good actually. I like the sound of the sampled instruments because they contain more of these traditional horn sounds. Let's contrast this with a performance with a swan tenor sax. have some differences at least. Uh, I find initially the sound in the V horn saxophones much more appealing. Uh, it's warmer and it's uh, meatier in some way. Uh, but on the other hand I feel that twam instruments are incredibly uh, agile and they follow your playing in the smallest details. But let's go to another example in the tenor sax department here. We have something called the JC preset. Leads me to believe that it might be John Coltrane. I used that for uh, his ballad Naima. Thank you. 
I'm interested in bringing out the smallest details in the V-horn saxophone so that you can hear that they actually sound good even on their own. Uh, let's head on further down the line. We have the alto sax now. So uh, that was the CBP preset for the Alto Sax 1. Uh, could be Charlie Bird Parker, I don't know. Could there be some copyright infringement lurking here, I don't know. Uh, at least I interpret this to be Parker and uh, I think it plays fairly well. Of course you have to do something in post-processing if you want to do some Parker of this I mean, you have to do some serious uh, distressing of the sound to make it sound older, of course. I might add at the same time that nothing is done in post-edit. I don't even have a door open when I do these recordings. So there's no MIDI editing done. So whatever you hear is actually playable. It, it may not be the best sounding video you've seen, but at least it's uh, sincere and it's honest in that the stuff you hear is the stuff that I played and I played it while I recorded. So if nothing else, that should be uh, the takeaway from this. Since uh, neither Braxton nor Ornett are represented among the presets here, uh, I took it upon myself to introduce you to the Alto Sax 2 and the Satin preset with Ornette Coleman's uh, Lonely Woman here. For anybody that would want to experiment with more modern sounds, of course you can use stuff like the key sounds and the tonguing effects. <laughs> But for those kind of uh, experiments, I would probably rather go to uh, the SWAM instruments since flexibility and assignability and parameter control is so much more extensive in, in those uh, instruments. But what kind of settings are we actually able to do here in Acoustic Samples v -Hors? To begin with, we do have some controllers that we can use and I'm going to go for the breath CC and as soon as I do that you see that it uh, automatically goes to manual on the vibrato. So let's go into the preferences and see what things that we can actually change if we want to do some sort of improvements uh, for playability sake say. To begin with, we have these key changes that as for a MIDI guitarist are kind of annoying if they're in the range of the guitar since we will probably hit the key switches at some point. So I'm moving those out of the range uh, first thing. Now that I changed my preset, I need to once again set the pitch band range so that it matches my pitch band range in the MIDI guitar 2 software. The pitch section here. Of course we can use that also for uh, MIDI guitar. Guitar in itself is pitchy enough as it is. So for this 
whole section. I would leave out stuff like note pitch imprecision. It's perfect, I think, for stuff like piano or keyboard when you're using a controller that's really precise. But with the imprecision of uh, the MIDI guitar setup in itself, we absolutely don't need any more imprecision. So pitch and uh, attack pitch variation and stuff like this, you can use it, of course, if you want to sort of spice up your game or if you want to play outside of your own pitch style. But I would recommend perhaps leave the rest for later. And then we come to the thing that acoustic samples themselves say is at the heart of any instrument use. And that would be the legato transition settings. Some small sounds associated with playing quirks that are specific to that instrument when playing a sort of a phrase going from one note to another. <laughs> There are a uh, velocity to attack for sustains and we have velocity to attack for legatos and velocity to attack time. Uh, I usually actually get rid of or minimize the velocity to attack time since I feel I get a better response from the instrument. <laughs> It's much, much harder for me to play with an increase in the velocity to attack time. It's a world of difference in how distinct this behaves once you actually pull the velocity to attack time back all the way. So working with a MIDI Guitar 2 setup, I would absolutely consider pulling it all the way back to play with. You have timbre variation and that's of course interesting since it affects the whole performance in a way. So this box I would consider to be at the heart of the saxophones. This is probably where you find most of the things that affect your actual performance. In most other cases like in the virtual space or in the mix here, these are affecting the sounds, but not affecting uh, how the instrument actually performs. Compared to a SWAM instrument, you don't really have that many settings to work with. This is why I'm telling you that if I'm going to do something really special, I'm going to do a, a complicated setup and I want to have total control over my parameters and as many parameters as possible, I would absolutely go for the SWAM instrument. But then again, if I want to have a great sound and an easy setup and I want to work right out of the box, I will absolutely go for these. Let's go to the soprano sax for another example here. I find it interesting at least to see that both SWAM and the V-Horns produce instruments that feel both pitchy and glitchy at least when it comes to the soprano sax. And I get the feeling that the higher in pitch the instruments are, the less realistic I find them. And that goes for tenor sax as well. I'm less happy with the high register in the tenor sax and probably in all of the instruments and it's 
even more obvious playability wise on the soprano sax. The thing that really sounds good with the V horns, for instance, is at the lower dynamics where you have this amount of air and stuff where you can sort of make out if I'm going into the preferences here. Uh, I can also add sort of details, noises and, and natural variations in, in, the, in the airflow. The keys I can absolutely pull up so that you'll hear. If I'm going to do this naked solo stuff, I can uh, have something that pulls the interest away from any bad playing of mine. Uh, you also have the air curve, of course, that I haven't spoken of yet. It determines how much your CC inputs from your breath controller affect the instruments. Where the soprano sax is, I can see myself using a curve that looks something like this, perhaps. where I can still be in contact with this middle part where there's a lot of air and a lot of small details that actually come through. So I'm gonna give you the Soprano 2 instead. I prefer this much darker toned instrument to the brighter one uh, instinctively. I don't know how this will make it in a mixing cut because I think it perhaps won't stand out as much. But for solo performances, absolutely. And if we just up the key somewhat. I think this saxophone actually sounds a lot better than the bright one as a solo performance instrument. Uh, let's go to a swam instrument. This is an old recording, but you'll hear the sound of the swam instrument. not totally different from the first one, the bright one, in this case. The last part of this saxophone's library now with the baritone saxophones. I feel it's a bit sluggish still, so I'll go for the velocity to attack time and decrease it. I think this one is better than the baritone sax one, 
which is the one we're going to look at now. perfectly fine but I find this tone a bit abrasive I think so I'm gonna leave you with uh, two different baritone saxophone recordings and come back to, for a conclusion afterwards played the audio modeling SWAM instruments for a few years and having gone over these uh, V-horn saxophones just recently. Are there any conclusions I can draw from this? Would there be any sort of advice I could give to any potential buyers? Uh, all of those things are of course depending on uh, what the buyer's intention of using them are. The thing I can say is, for me personally, uh, I would give the sound edge to the V-horns. Uh, the playability edge absolutely to the SWAM instruments. And let's not forget that the SWAM instruments also have their own VSTs or their own packaging or their own uh, containers. Plus, they are super lightweight for the computer to to run with so that's also a plus for them i don't know if price really is that big of a difference i think the v horn saxophones are 200 euros at this time and the the audio modeling uh, swam saxophones package is 250 it's 50 euros Perhaps that makes a difference for somebody. Okay, if you're looking for something like the 60s sound, uh, Joe Henderson or, or Dexter Gordon or, or uh, early Coltrane or whatever, I think absolutely the V-horns are a step up from the SWAM instruments in terms of authenticity. It, it, they, they sound more real and there's, there are some qualities that absolutely are uh, are a step up and I will probably use those instruments for whenever I'm going to do any sort of mock-ups from that era. Uh, if I'm going to do some technical setups where I need to have control over a lot of parameters I will of course go for the SWAM instruments instead. So it's a toss-up it really. It's, if you can afford both sets of instruments absolutely great. Uh, if you can't you really need to think through what what your intentions with them are. It has certainly been a most pleasant experience to having uh, stumbled upon these instruments. I'm uh, graciously indebted to the guys at the VI Control Forum for having their channels open for discussion so that we all can actually benefit from the information exchanged there.
So my contribution to that would be this video in where I at least give you some sort of audio examples in this case with MIDI guitar as its base. I hope this has been informative and I hope to see you in the next video. So bye for now.